All right, here it is. My massive top list of 2017 anime, which is, of course, a couple months late. So if you have been around my channel since this time last year, you'll know I like to make a top list to highlight my favorite shows of the year. But I do not just stop there. And instead, I include all the anime from the year that I tried. It may kind of defeat the purpose of a top list if I'm including everything, but I figure I have something to say about all these even if they're just boring and I drop them and that's all. Plus, I think giant lists are cool, so why not do it this way? Like last year, I'm first ranking shows based off if I finished them or not. So the shows that I finished are at the top and the shows I didn't are at the bottom. This might seem strange in a couple cases, but I figure if a show has enough in it for me to finish it, then it should be above those I didn't. I'm also ranking the shows I dropped based off how many episodes I saw and then by the score that I gave them. So a show that I dropped right away will be near the bottom, while a show that I almost finished will be like kind of in the middle. And of course, this is all based on my personal taste, preference, and all that. So yeah, your list would probably be different. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get on with the list. Number 71, Aero Manga Sensei. I don't think I need to say why this is last place. It has incest, unlikable characters, and the comedy wasn't funny. I'm not opposed to trashy shows, but they have to at least be fun. And this wasn't fun, though I know some people like it, but whatever. Number 70, The Reflection. Really, how boring can you make a superhero anime? Well, this show answered that question. I was really hoping Stan Lee could do something more here because like he's done so many cool things, but this, it wasn't one of them. I'm just hoping he doesn't let me down with Hero Man. If he does, then well, he should just avoid anime. Number 69, Shugaku no Altair. A boring show about some sort of war and stuff. I don't even remember. When I first read the script, I even put the wrong description here. So yeah, something boring. Number 68, Royal Tutor. A boring show about princes being tutored. Number 67, Restaurant in Another World. A boring show about food and fantasy worlds. Number 66, Kabuki Boo. A boring show about a high school kabuki club. Also the reason I know what Kabuki is. Number 65, Hino Logi from Luck and Logic. A boring show that was a spinoff to another boring show from last year. Number 64, Girls Last Tour. A boring show about girls in a post-apocalyptic setting. An interesting concept, but it was boring, so the rest doesn't matter. Number 63, Dive, with two exclamation points. A boring show about a diving team. If you want man service, go watch free. Number 62, Diaz Irae. A boring show about Nazis. And pretty colors, I think. I th at least there's lots of gold and stuff. Although it wasn't all that pretty. Number 61. Alice 2 Zoroku. A boring show about a girl and an old man and occasional fun action and the old man being cool. Still mostly dull. Number 60. Yokai Apartment. Yokai Apartment was about a guy who moved into an apartment filled with spirits. Not bad, but no reason for me to keep watching. Number 59. Magic Guru Guru. A kind of funny parody of retro video games, and again, not bad, but when the show is based on its humor, and the humor didn't really connect with me that much, yeah, no reason to keep going. Number 58, Junai Tyson. Cool action, but what I saw and heard about the latter episode, not enough of a story for it to be worth my time. Number 57, Sword Arita, the Danmachi spinoff. This was one where I kind of liked the original series, but the wasn't much to grab me here, just could not really see a reason to keep going. If I was wrong, feel free to tell me how I missed this great masterpiece and maybe I will watch more. Number 56, Katsuki Toku Rambu. And we have now started the shows that I stayed around for at least two episodes before deciding it was boring and dropped it. This one had cool action, but really no substance with the characters or story to keep me interested, so yeah, dropped it like right after episode two. Number 55, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. A cute dragon and a girl don't make a boring show not boring. Neither do pointless explosions. As much as I like them, there needs to be something more for me to keep watching. Number 54, Soccer Quest. A boring show about a girl working. It's not high school, so it could be worse. Number 53, Yojo Senki. 
This one is not boring and had interesting elements, but with the overpowered protagonist that wasn't really likable, I found it kind of hard to get into what was going on. Plus, I was not a fan of how they did the religious themes here, though this has more to do with my own personal tastes and beliefs than anything wrong with the show. I get the appeal here, but this is one that I just do not think is for me. Number 52, Kakegure. A show that attempts to make mundane games exciting by having overblown stakes, but this just really made it backfire and feel more edgy than exciting. Number 51, Wuso Shoujo. A show that tried to be a ridiculous over-the-top action show, but failed because it did not have over-the-top action. That's really the key here. Number 50, 10 centimeters apart. A boring romance that felt overly dragged out because the characters wouldn't say how they felt. Number 49, Zero Kara, Grimoire of Zero. A decent fantasy bogged up by a melodrama caused by characters being idiots. Number 48, Vatican Miracle Examiner. A somewhat interesting mystery show, but like Yojo Senkai, the way they handled the religious elements here was just a turnoff for me. Number 47, In Another World with My Smartphone. A standard trapped in a video game like world anime with an overpowered protagonist. It felt like they could have done something cool with the idea and lack of a twist, but what we got here is just so dull I didn't even want to see more. Number 46, Grand Blue Fantasy. A decent fantasy show, but not enough for me to justify watching more. Number 45, Silver Guardian. A boring show about a gamer and stuff. The first episode made it seem like it would have cool action, and then said action disappeared for the next at least two or three episodes. I actually forget how far I got. Number 44, Rena Boken. A comedy exploring forbidden love in various forms. The comedy was great at the start, but then just lost steam quickly. Number 43, Himono Friends. Cute animal characters doing cute things in a world that is apparently really interesting if you make it past the first few boring episodes, which I did not. Number 42, Cleo no Akari. A mostly boring show about a sick and bullied girl. There are a couple of really good highlights in the first couple episodes, but that was not enough to carry the series. You need more than one good minute each episode for me to like a show. Number 41, Black Clover, a doll action shonen. The dub may have saved my ears from Asta screaming, but it didn't make the show any more interesting. Number 40, UQ Holder. Another doll action shonen, this time filled with fan service. I may not have the highest standards when it comes to shows like these, but you at least have to have an interesting plot a few episodes in. I'm not asking for much. Number 39, Knights and Magic. Another mostly boring show about being trapped in another world with an overpowered protagonist. There were some fun moments that kept me interested this long, but apart from these, just nothing about the show made me want to keep going, so I dropped it after ever how many episodes it was. Number 38, Chronos Rulers. Another mostly dull action shonen. This one did have some neat ideas and character dynamics, but it felt like it was just trying to push the mediocre plot farther than it could take, making the whole thing just feel stupid and not in the fun way. Number 37, Inushiki. A somewhat interesting science fiction show with a fascinatingly twisted villain, but it was bogged down by science fiction elements that really did not make any sense and seemed to be there just to advance the plot in whatever way it needed. This is more a topic for another video, but if a science fiction anime is trying to be realistic, the technology really needs to make sense in the world that we're presented. This, it just does whatever. So yeah, that really bothered me. More than for most people probably, but it was enough to drop Ino Yoshiki. Number 36, Fastest Finger First, a show about a quiz bowl club. This one I did like for a while with the uniqueness of the type of club, but again, it's mostly a, a high school slice of life and not that interesting of one. Number 35, Suki Gakiri. A somewhat unique romance for how down to earth it was, but felt like it got melodramatic with some of the conflicts they introduced, and I just found most of the cast not likable, which for a slice of life, you really do want to have characters I can connect to, and when there was only one, yeah, that wasn't enough. Number 34, Classroom of the Elite. And finally, the last of the shows that I dropped. This was a show that had a lot of potential by being thematically deep with the society in the school setting, though the show actually has to do interesting ideas with these ideas instead of just spouting them trying to act smart. Or could it work by having a cool main character to keep me engaged, but he was just someone who sat in the background, didn't want to do anything, and yeah, he was dull. And while I got a ways with the show, I finally got to the point where it's like, this show's not going anywhere. Why am I watching it? I don't care if I only have two episodes left. Plus, I'm pretty sure the season would end in complete, so yeah, no. And that is the shows I dropped from last year. 
Feel free to yell at me that I should pick those back up, and maybe I will. We'll see. Regardless, now for the shows, I ended up watching all of for one reason or another. You know who you are. Number 33, King's Game. You know, this is probably the worst game of the year and even deserves to be below Aramanga Sensei. But I managed to finish it, which the main reason for that is because I'm watching it for the next episode of Anime Nomad Podcast, which a link will be to down... I don't know where. Description, probably. Maybe on screen, too. I don't know. Back to the show, though. I actually did have some hope when it first aired. I even liked the first episode and thought it could be a cool dark survival story, even if it did feel a bit overly edgy at times. But then, as the episodes went on, I soon realized the show had no idea what it was doing. Pretty much all the cast were idiots without a reason to care about them. We had about five episodes of flashbacks which had no tension because we already knew what would happen. Yes, I know flashbacks are about the journey, not the destination. But when it fails to make me care about the journey, or even consider it's a flashback when presenting the story, then it just fails. There is a lot more I could say, but I'll save that for the podcast. Though, if you want me to make a full review tearing it to shreds, I have the notes for it. That would be fun. I should go do that. But I have this massive video to voice and edit, and why do I do this? I don't know. Next show. Number 32, Koi to Uso. This is an example of how not to do romantic drama. I thought it could be a really great show with the society choosing who people marry and then the main character wanting to go against it with the music that just knows how to be oh so emotional. But then as the show went further along, it really didn't do anything with the concept of the society and was just about the main guy figuring out which girl he wanted to choose. It's like a normal harem. It felt like the plot wasn't going anywhere and all the absurd justifications for the romantic feelings just fell flat. I will say the ending was unexpected, but if they wanted to go that direction, they needed more to it instead of just ending it there. Give me these ramifications because that could actually be interesting. But as we got it now, another disappointment. Number 31, 18F. 18F is probably one of the weirdest shows of the year and one that I thought was really cool because of the weirdness. The issue is that most of the show is just episodic and while some episodes were interesting, they often just felt boring because of the lack of a cohesive story to tie them all together even if the ending did try to pull everything together. And I did like that they gave this a conclusion like that and had everything kind of build to this big reveal in the final arc. But the final battle was diffused by just drinking tea. And after all that build up, I really wanted an epic fight. It is amazing how an ending can just tank so much. Number 30, A Sister Is All You Need. And this show is probably the one that makes me question Japan the most. The first scene was a completely ridiculous scene between a brother and sister, and the sister was naked and doing things that just should not be done. None of these things should be done. Do not do these things. But we learned that the opening scene was actually just out of a novel the main character was writing. A lot of people drop the anime in the first scene, but really, the show is a lot more to it. It is a slice of life about white novel authors and the struggles that they go through with a good amount of comedy thrown in and even a little bit of romance. I really like the parts that show their struggles and how they are trying to keep pushing forward as authors despite that. The absurd comedy can also work well and I appreciate workplace slice of life which this kind of is except these people are more like they write in their own home so there's not a workplace except i don't know where am i going with this and i do like workplace slice of life especially if they can show the characters struggling through their jobs but for all i like about the show there are a number of uh, big issues mainly involving the fan service that ended up getting in the way of the comedy and while this may be me playing the whole sexual assault as fan service is something that i just hated and almost dropped the anime there i was glad that most of the show ended well but there's also that one plot element that I really wanted to see more resolved. There is a lot to like about the show, and that surprised me, but there are too many problems holding it back to keep the show from being as good as it could have been. Though, maybe this is my fault for expecting an etchy fan service show to not be filled with etchy fan service. Number 29, Akashic Record. This was okay. It was an interesting enough show to watch week to week, but really nothing great or revolutionary or that I would recommend. Plus, it didn't inc incomplete. Yeah, really not much to say if the main guy was kind of fun. Very easily fits my average rating here.
Number 28, Little Witch Academia. And here is a good example of why I do not enjoy slice of life animes. It felt like most of the show was just episodic plots that didn't lead to anything, even when there was kind of an overall plot that it was trying to build to. I do admit there were some highlights with the show, especially involving Chariot, and that's why it's not lower on my list and why I did not end up dropping it. Though I wish they pushed this idea further and the end was ridiculous in the best possible way, but it felt like another case of where I wish they'd do more to build up to it. If you are a fan of fun slice of life anime shows, you may enjoy this one, but otherwise it's one I pretty safely say just give a pass. Number 27, Handshakers. This show is a complete mess with distracting CG, shaky plot elements that aren't fully explained, battles that don't make sense, not to mention off-putting elements. But you know what? I liked it. It is a show about uncovering the mysteries of the world, fighting for one's dreams, and also about the bonds between these various characters. And the style, while not always handled well, or most of the time not handled well, is still one I enjoyed for its uniqueness. Handshakers does not look like other anime. And while you could say this is a bad distracting thing, I thought it was cool. Every year there seems to be a show that everyone hates that I like and, well, this year it's Handshakers. For all of its flaws, it was an interesting action show that I enjoyed pretty much all the way through. So that's why it gets a score saying I like it. The lowest possible score to say I like something, but still, I like it. Number 26, Lou Over the Wall. This movie is about a guy who wants to be a musician, mermaids who love music, and what happens when these two worlds collide. It is a family-friendly adventure type story that reminds me of the works of Miyazaki or even kind of Disney, especially with the different cultures combining together and the musical elements. I will admit that much of this show wasn't all that interesting and there isn't enough real depth to give the show much praise, but the ending was quite satisfying and I have to say by the end I did like the show. It was also directed by Yuasa, known for shows like Tatami Galaxy, among others, and his style is shown quite well here, though it is probably the least standout of his works. Number 25, Rewrite. Now this is an interesting one. It is based upon a highly regarded visual novel, and after watching the anime, I can agree with the praise the visual novel gets. It just has so many different concepts combined together in a way that just makes the whole world and show quite exciting. Each character is fighting for different things, all of them striving to make the world a better place. And it had some really shocking twists that I did not see coming, and I like the combination of ordinary life with the supernatural. But sadly, the show just wasn't able to capitalize on all the potential, especially as the show barreled toward the end and really just did not make any sense in that end. So maybe I'll need to play the visual novel to get the story in the correct way. Number 24, Trickster. Do you ever find a show that no one seems to talk about, but do you see something in it that just excites you? It might be slow to grow on you, but then you slowly find yourself hooked. You find that this is your type of show. You really get invested in the characters, cheer as they grow closer together to overcome their past, and then want to yell at them as they fail because of their own choices. And then, just when you think it could be animated a year, and it would be the perfect thing to surprise everyone, it falls apart, becomes dull, boring, and nonsensical. Well, I know that feeling because that was Trickster for me. I really like the first 10 or so episodes, it's having a lot of show and troops I love with the mystery and detective story all on top of it, but then it just seemed like the story was going in circles, undoing what had been done and then just getting stuck. Not to mention the lack of any logic during the final arc, and yeah. I still like the show, if anything for the concept and the characters, but it was so far away from what it could have been. And that really saddens me. Number 23, World End, also known as Suka Suka. And no, I'm not going to say the entire light novel name. This is one of the shows that is all about building a bond between the characters so it can have an emotional impact, which I'll admit it does. It is a fantasy world where these young girls are tasked with fighting off monsters and a man is brought in to help protect them and guide them along the way. The fantasy world is interesting as we start peeling back the layers of what really happened here, especially regarding who these girls are, and the music is quite standout to amplify these effects. A few months ago, I actually had one of the songs stuck in my head, and I could not figure out what anime it was from, and that really bugged me. Like, I thought it was maybe Made in Abyss, but that wasn't it. But then I finally found it, and yeah, good music. 
For the show as a whole though, I didn't care for it as much as I wanted to with parts of just feeling dull, especially in the ending. I could feel the emotion they were going for, but it just looked like, ah, I see what you're doing. Okay. And it was more predictable than exciting. A decent show overall, but again, nothing really remarkable. Number 22, The Dragon Dentist. This is a story about those who live on top of a giant dragon and clean its teeth. More exciting than it sounds. This is a show that blends unique supernatural elements with the story of a war happening down below. The Society of the Dentists is a fascinating one with how they value their lives. And sadly, while the show had an interesting start, the second part was much more dull. Again, not a bad show, but not quite as good as I had hoped. Number 21, Please Take My Brother Away. This is a short comedy about a brother and sister that is, well, kind of funny. Because of its limited runtime, it's short, quick, to the point, and while it doesn't have much of a plot, it didn't get boring. The comedy is the strength of the show, and it was okay. Nothing great, but it took me like a half hour to watch, and it was well worth that time. Number 20, Land of the Lustrious. I have to say, this show really impressed me, and I'm glad I gave it another shot, because when I first tried it, I dropped it like 10 minutes in. It really is the best example of how to do CG in all of anime. Most shows that use it try to use it as a complement to the 2D, have it in the background to do effects that they cannot hand draw. And it can work well here. But Land of the Lustries is the first anime I've seen to truly use the power of full CG, especially with the camera movements during the action scenes. The story, though, I'm sadly less excited about. The whole mystery of the world and these characters is the main appeal of the show, but it had such a slow start that it was hard to get through. Once it picked up, though, and really let Faust shine as a character, I liked it, though the show also being incomplete brings it back down for me. Again, not a bad show, great CG, and does other unique things, but a boring start plus an incomplete show, and it can't rank that high on my list. Number 19, Kino's Journey. Kino's Journey is an episodic show that follows Kino as she travels to different countries and sees how they live their lives. Each country is a different society with different morals and values, and it is really cool learning about all these different countries. But the episodic nature of the show did hurt it quite a bit because I did not feel like the show was going anywhere, even if I did like most of the episodes. I know that again, life is a journey and it's all about that and not a destination, but I still want some sort of direction for the journey to go, or at least show how Kino's time in these different countries build upon each other. But overall, decent, unique, but nothing great. Number 18, Kenko Banshu Otome. Here we have another simple short about a girl who is roped into going to an all-boys school and beats up people to become the leader of the school, while also becoming friends with those she fights along the way. This is a very basic action shoujo, but because of its shortness, the simplicity of the show ended up working. The ideas of friendship also make this show a lot of fun, and it feels like the show really embraced the cheesiness and simplicity of the plot. The action wasn't great. Heck, nothing about the show stood out, but this is a case where a simple idea was enough to be fun. Number 17, Sword Art Online Ordinal Scale. I've talked about this movie a couple times, and it really was one of the biggest surprises for me. Not because I liked it, but because I liked it only after seeing the movie twice. The movie is able to do something that most trapped in a fantasy like world shows don't, which is showing the aftermath, both on the characters and society. It also explores different technologies, such as augmented reality specifically here, and add this to a cool action show with characters the show actually got me to care about, and yeah, I liked it quite a bit. The show may be far from flawless, and its handling of many of the ideas is messy, but it's my favorite part of SAO so far, and it gives me hope for the future. However, misguided that hope might be as I started season two. Number 16, Princess Principal. Now this show was cool. I mean, you have girls who are spies in a steampunk version of England with a great war between two sides and just some plain awesome music. How could that not be at the least cool? Putting all the coolness aside though, I did feel that the story was kind of lacking with the out of order storytelling not really working all that well. Though I will admit some of the character introductions were kind of done better partway through the series as opposed to at the very beginning. I also really liked the dynamic between Anj and the princess as the story got further along. Though sadly, it's another incomplete show, so unless we get more, it really isn't all that special. 
Number 15, The Night is Short, Walk On Girl. I talked about this movie in quite a lot of detail in my review, so go check that out if you want my full thoughts. But in short, it's a fun slice of life adventure following two characters and the craziness of the night that they face. It is very absurd at times, but that's what makes it so much fun, or at the least, not the type of movie you see too often. Plus, it has Yolasa style all over it, which does help out quite a bit. I don't like this movie as much as some, but it's still pretty good. Number 14, Blend S. Blend S is a slice of life comedy that takes place at the cafe, following the employees where all the characters take on different roles for the customers. From big sister to little sister to sadist, memes ensue. But beyond the memes, there is a lot of actually good comedy here with all the interactions between the cast. Not much to say other than, well, it's funny. And yeah, I know I'm bad at describing why I like comedy, but just go watch this. I think after an episode or two, you will understand. Number 13, Recreators. Now here was a show that early on, I thought it could easily become my anime of the year. And I was already thinking about all the things I could say about it. How it embodied all that I loved about the medium, took aspects from all these other shows I liked and did them better, and inspired me as a person. And while it does have a lot of good about it, I did find it to be far more disappointing as we got further along than I hoped it would be. It's a story about characters from anime and video games coming to the real world, and what happens when they clash. There are a lot of ridiculous concepts smashed together, and that made the show just plain fun. And I love how the show focused on the power that stories have to inspire others and impact the world. The different ways the creations all took to being in the world were cool too, but with some of them wanting to do violent things to their creators as a sort of revenge. But for all the good the show had going for it, the plan for the heroes to win just felt very contrived and forced. It's like they had all this interesting setup and then needed to find a way to get to an ending, so they figured this was the best way to do it. In the end though, I still liked it, because the ending had lots of cool action, but it was disappointing compared to what it could have been. I also feel like the show was too self-aware at times. Like, it was trying to show off the fact that it was a show about creating and while for a while it was cool to see it, it just felt forced at times like they had no other things to present that we hadn't seen before. A good show, yes, but not nearly as good as I hoped. And not one I can really strongly recommend unless you are a writer or artist. And if you are one of those, go check this out. I think it's worthwhile. Number 12, Gamers. This show went a different direction than I expected at the start. Even the first episode, it looked like it would be about a guy joining a club play games with people, and get to know people in it. But then, he turns out rejecting the club, and the show became a comedy filled with misunderstandings and melodrama. And while this is normally a bad thing, I ended up loving it. The comedy was great, with both the animation and the English dub bringing it to life so well. And we also saw the characters group closer together, fall apart, and really, it was just a comedy of idiots. But in a good way. Eventually, though, the comedy did lose its luster near the end, and that made the whole show start to fall apart, though it did give you fitting into the romance. Though that final episode, just bad. It was like they needed another episode, so they threw something together quickly, and they really should have ended it one episode further. Or they should have made that opening scene into the entire episode, because that would have been weird in a good way. Number 11. Children of the Whales. And now here is a part of the video where I get to talk about my true tops of the year. And it was so hard to narrow this down to only 11 shows. Don't ask why I pick 11 for my number, I just do. And I had like 12 or 13, it's like, uh, they're so close. But Children of the Whales went out because of how much I love this one. It tells the story of a society who lives upon a sand whale, an island that flows upon an ocean of sand. Most of the characters have a mark on them, which shows that they have telekinetic-like power, but because of this, they also have very short lives, only living to around the age of 30. And this setting is a framework for one of the most fascinating shows of the year. We eventually learn about the world as a whole, why these characters are living on the same whale, and it is just so cool to learn about this world. But then, as they learn more, a lot of challenges come with more action than I expected from a show like this. Sadly though, as much as I love it, it is incomplete. And just as we were starting to be introduced to the societies outside of the sand whale. So yeah, that's a major disappointment. There are also some very stupid decisions made by the villains that seem to be there to make sure the good guys just didn't all die in episode 3. But this wasn't that big of a deal. And yeah, 
Overall, a good show that if they make more, it could become something amazing. Number 10, Aho Girl. I have already talked about several good companies this year, but really, this is one of the best. It centers around a young girl who is, well, an idiot, and the friends that she has and makes throughout the course of the show. This is a short anime with each episode only being 10 minutes long and each episode being divided into four parts. This makes the comedy very fast paced, which works wonderfully for the type of off the wall comedy it is. I don't think there's a single part throughout the entire series that I did not find funny. And while Aho Girl is great, where the shoe really shines is how she's able to have her craziness bounce off all the other characters, some who are very serious, and others are just as crazy as she is. Where the show is able to set itself apart though, is how it proves that just because someone is an idiot does not mean that they can't be a good person, or just because someone is technically smart does not mean that they are a good person. Plus, bananas. Bananas are good. Plus, dog coon. Fluffy dogs are good. Number 9. Star Mew Season 2. For a long time, Star Me was my benchmark for what I considered an average show. A somewhat interesting plot, characters that had just enough development, and a show that never excited me, but also never really bored me. Seeing this get a second season did not really excite me because of that, but I liked the first one just enough that I figured I should give the second season a try even if I dropped it right away. But to my surprise, I really liked it. Star Mew is a show about a group of students at a music and dance school, and it is also a musical that includes the characters breaking into random songs at least once per episode to express their feelings, sometimes to each other, sometimes to the audience, and sometimes both. And these songs are just amazing because the show goes all out with the visuals for them. Some anime save their entire budget for the fight scenes, but Star Mew does that for the songs. This season, the story focuses on a play that the school is doing, where the students will get a chance to perform with their mentors who graduated the year before. But, as expected from a show like this, the main character doesn't have the talent to compete with the others, but still strives to achieve this anyway. His struggle in overcoming his weakness is something that really appeals to me, especially as he is able to connect with others and encourage them as well. We get some really interesting looks at some of the other characters too, especially one who's stuck in the shadow of the one he admires so much. This is easily my favorite musical anime, though I will admit I haven't seen too many, but Star Mew really impressed me this year, and I am excited for season three next year. Number eight, Konosuba season two. There have been good comedies this year that I've talked about, but really none could compare with Konosuba and how outlandish it all is. If you somehow have not seen Konosuba, go watch it, at least the first episode. It is about a guy that gets sent to a video game like World, and he is the only somewhat sane person in this world of whack jobs that includes a useless goddess, a lowly who likes explosions, and a masochistic knight. Though we all know which one is best girl. This is another show where the character's personalities and flaws really work wonderfully with all the challenges that they face, especially because most of the challenges are brought on by themselves. It is true that the show completely forgets about any plot it might have had at one point, but with comedy this good, I really can't complain. Number 7. Yuki Yuna is a Hero This entry is for both seasons, since I watched them both for this list, Though even if I was only considering season 2, I would still say it would be in this place. Yuki Yuna is a dark, magical girl show about a hero club who tries to make the world a better place and then is called to be magical girls to actually be heroes and save the world. Throughout the story, they learn that the world is more than it seems and that being heroes who protect the world isn't so simple. What really sets Yuki Yuna apart from other shows like it is the focus on the humanity of the characters. We see them as the kids that they are, just having fun with their friends, which makes the darker parts of the show all the more powerful. Number six, Anime Guitarist. This show is a celebration of what makes anime so great. It is a show for anime fans by anime fans, and it makes no effort to hide it. Anime Guitarist focuses on an anime club, specifically a new girl who ends up getting roped into joining and falls in love with anime. Throughout the show, she learns about the various aspects of anime culture from cosplay to conventions and even terminology like the three episodes rule and the ever-present question of how much the source material actually matters when judging anime. All this makes it a pretty good comedy, but it has one aspect that truly sets it apart from anything else I have ever seen, and that is the ending. It ends up going off the deep end here, but manages to somehow stick the landing 
even if it did fall on his face to do so. Throughout the show is building to this twist and all these things came together in a way that I don't want to spoil it because of how amazing it is. Yeah, we're going to go with amazing. And it was really able to take advantage of its celebration of anime. It feels like a lot of shows are afraid to really take risks to do unique things. But Anime Guitarist is not one of these. You may not like it as much as I do. That is fine. But you'll have to say it is something unique. Number five, Made in Abyss. Made in Abyss is a fantasy adventure focusing on two characters as they descend a dangerous abyss in search of answers. There are countless mysteries about the abyss, and as the characters go deeper, they continue to face danger. What starts off appearing to be very lighthearted turns into the most emotionally devastating anime of the year. In fact, there is one scene. If you've seen the anime, you know what scene I'm talking about. That was so just painful to watch, I wanted to drop the anime there. Like... Not that it was bad. No, it was just so good. It's so powerful and so heart-wrenching. It's like, I could barely take it. And seeing these young and innocent characters just face such horror, it was amazing. Though, sadly, this show is incomplete. Though we are getting more, so I'm not going to hold that against the show. And while the show does have some flaws, it has so many great aspects that if you have somehow not seen the show, go watch it. I think you'll appreciate it too. Number four, Black Butler, Book of Atlantic. Another year, another entry into the Black Butler franchise, which seems to just keep getting better. This time we follow Sale and Sebastian as they board a ship to investigate a mysterious doctor who claims to be able to bring people back to life. Of course, the power to raise the dead does not come without its complications, and this quickly turns chaotic, so Sebastian does what he does best and fights off evil with silverware. The movie had some of the best plot twists of the year, which were just amazing to see as a fan of the franchise for so long, and seeing what they were doing with these plot elements that I kind of written off since the beginning. We also learned more about CL and Sebastian and how they met, along with their early time together, and this is all interspersed with some great action. My favorite anime movie to come out this year, and I hope they continue making more movies or series or however else they want to keep adapting this great franchise. Number three, Attack on Titan season two. Of course, the mega hyped anime that got me into season anime back in 2013 had to be pretty high on the list because the second season reminded me of just how much power Attack on Titan has. It is a thrilling action suspense show with the season having a few more horror elements spread in. The dangers the characters in really felt real with humans so fragile against the power of the Titans and I liked seeing more of the side characters and what they fought for. But of course nothing compares to the big moments of hype that the show had that literally knocked me off my couch. We may not have gotten a long season after such a wait but it was was enough to rekindle my love with this great series and make me really want more. Soon please. Number two, My Hero Academia. If you have been around my channel for any time at all, the fact that I hold My Hero Academia in such high regard is no secret. I've made a dozen videos about how much I love this show, but what might surprise you is the fact that it's not my number one. So you're probably asking, what didn't I like about the show? Well, I didn't think Stain was all that great, at least not as great as other people claim he was. They had a number of what I call like last second saves, which felt like a cheap way out of the danger for the characters. And then they had that whole explaining how the world worked thing at the start of every episode of the tournament arc, even though we knew it already. And then there's also the fact that the battles should actually hurt the characters more than they actually do, but yeah, that's about it. So now you cannot say I'm a fanboy who never criticizes the show, but really. All these th issues are very minor, and this is my favorite anime of all time. So why wouldn't my favorite anime of all time be number one for a year it aired? Well, for the simple reason, it's incomplete. One of my biggest issues with anime as a whole is that so many shows just end incomplete. And now we are getting more of a lot of the big ones, this one included, but too often there are smaller shows that while good just we only get a piece of their story. I also don't feel I can fully judge a show until I've seen all of it, so I refuse to make my top anime of the year a show that's incomplete. It's also why shows that are continuing on into 2018 aren't on this list. I'll get to them when they finish, and include them on next year's list, where I guess technically it would be this year's list, though they'll probably won't be out until next year. So yeah, as long as I keep being a My Hero Academia fanboy, I expect for it to be number two on this list for whatever year it airs. So now, you're probably wondering what show I could put at number one. 
you're probably thinking of the big shows, your favorites, trying to figure out which one I missed. Well, there are a lot of shows that I thought would win for a while. I thought Girl for a long time because I hadn't found anything else good that was complete. And then things like Anime Guitars because of its celebration of anime would be the perfect way to cap off the list. Though I did also consider Yukina for the strength of the hero chapter. But the show that ended up being number one... It was a complete surprise for me. I didn't expect to like the show much. In fact, when it came up on my list of shows to watch, I hoped it would be bad so I could just drop it and finish my list. But, well, it seemed fate had other plans. Yes, the number one spot of the year goes to Fate Apocrypha. Like other fates, Apocrypha tells the story of the Holy Grail War, where mages summon servants who are heroes from history, and there's the death battle with the winning master and servant, receiving the prize of the wish-granting Holy Grail. What makes Apocrypha different is that instead of seven sets of masters and servants fighting each other, there are instead two teams of seven mages and servants for a total of 28 characters, counting all these servants and masters, plus the other assorted characters that are added. While this number does seem overwhelming at first, most of the characters have a very distinct personality which makes them stand out enough and makes them easy to root for. Plus, the show is able to skirt around some of the issues by having some of the characters not really have a role in the story until near the end. The story also isn't as straightforward as the concept would make it appear, with lots of different various betrayals and alliances formed throughout the show that constantly shift the balance of power. All these things make the show interesting, especially with the good action throughout, but it's not enough to make it anime of the year. That ended up coming near the end, with one of the battles just truly becoming heartbreaking, and again, I don't want to give it away. One of the major ideas explored through the series is if humanity is inherently good or not, and what action should then be taken from that answer. The part that slowed me on the show really illustrated the dark sides of humanity and how tragic it is. And it also showed how justified anger at this darkness can lead to hate and even evil. I also absolutely love the villains of the show as well. It has those who are fighting for a noble cause and want the best for humanity. And you also have villains who have lost all sense of morality. And still others who are just along for the story. There's also a lot of ridiculousness throughout the story with the clash of historical figures. Like, you have Joan of Arc fighting William Shakespeare, and it is just awesome because of how ridiculous it is. And then the uh, battles taking place on top of flying airplanes. Like, come on, how is that not awesome? And then the animation for some of the fights, especially near the end, is just insane. Fate might even surpass my hair academia when it comes to the pure coolness of the action. So yeah, Fate really is a great franchise, and I have yet to see a series from it I don't like a lot. And with Apocrypha giving me likable and interesting characters, an exciting story with lots of twists, themes about what it means to be human, great action, and not to mention a great dub, I can think of no other show that deserves a spot as my anime of the year. But of course, I might have missed something even for all the anime I tried. So tell me what your top show of the year was, especially if it is one that I did not watch. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to collapse and question why I even do this every year. Holy crap, I've been recording for close to an hour. No wonder I am so thirsty. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.